Hello there, hello there. My name is Collins Nanaya Abrebesa, and you are welcome to um, Hitchcock TV. Uh, in today's lessons, I want us to look at the uh, activities of George McLean in the Gold Coast. Uh, but before we begin to say anything, let's take a look at our lesson objectives for today. So our lesson objectives for today is that one, we should be um, able to um, discuss the achievements of McLean. Uh, because uh, Maclean is generally uh, regarded as the best for colonial master uh, in the Gold Coast. And so uh, we will discuss the achievements of George Maclean. And then also we will look at the, um, the terms in the Peace Treaty, the Tripartite Treaty, uh, Peace Treaty signed by Maclean and the chiefs uh, of the Gold Coast. Now, who is George Maclean? Now, George Maclean was not. Uh, a governor All right now he came into the scene after um, 1826 uh, now the British fought two wars with the uh, I mean Asante the first one was the Insamanko war of course, which was fought between Asante and Dentra in 1824 and so uh, Charles McCarthy who had been appointed as um, governor of the Gold Coast at that time uh, or wanted peace to trade among the people. However, the Asantis were very, very stubborn. And so uh, Charles McCarthy then saw the uh, Dentra Asante war as an opportunity to uh, engage for himself or the British um, army or forces in the war and then um, to silence Asante uh, once and for all. So the aim of George uh, McCarthy in joining the Dentra to fight the Asante was to um, silence the Asante. But then, uh, as fate will have it, Charles McCarthy was killed by the Asante army. In interestingly, and if you if you read uh, the records, uh, it tells you that uh, according to one, they said his head, McCarthy's head was cut off and the skull or the head was sent to Kumasi. Uh, and to be used as a war a relic, where at uh, times they even said, you know, if you read some uh, Western uh, historians, they would say things like the Asantehne or the king of the Asante Empire used the skull of, of Makati to drink water, which I don't think it was true. All those are Western, uh, you know, of course, of course, they are Western misconceptions and Western. Uh, for racism kind of, you know, but then Komakati, for the long and short, was that Makati was killed in that battle, and the British, don't forget, had uh, promised the, uh, for the southern state of protection, and so with the 1824 in Samanko battle, the British were fed up, I mean, they were ashamed of themselves, uh, because they look, the, the, the coastal states, or people were looking up to the British for protection against the Asante, and now um, these people have been killed. I mean, the the commander who was leading them has been killed. So it was a big blow to the British. Now the British then decided that in two years later, in 1824, they will come back again to revenge uh, the defeating of course humiliation that the Asantes had put them through in 1824. Uh, so in the Dodoa war or between the Ga and the Asante, the British also again backed the Ga Adangwe and of course this time around they were able to um, defeat the, uh, um, the Asante army. But then in 1828, the British then decided that they would leave the Gold Coast. And the reason was quite simple. Uh, the reason that they gave for leaving the Gold Coast was that they said that the place was not or the conditions was not good to enhance um, trading and what and governance because they were fed up with what the Asantes were doing. Uh, the British had wanted to trade yet the Asantes were not giving them that peace because Asante um, constantly was attacking the um, southern states and thereby uh, disrupting trade. So in 1828, they decided to leave the Gold Coast, and that's the British government. However, the traders, or 
for the British uh, traders who had come and were not willing to leave because they were traders and they have seen uh, the items of goods that they so much um, demand. And so they were not ready to leave. So then the British governor decided to hand over the castle and the forts to these merchants uh, to handle them because for them or the monarch, he was not going to appoint anybody, you know, to come and be a governor or whatsoever. So had it not been Maclean, and this I always say this, had it not been Maclean, like I don't think Gold Coast would have been colonized or Ghana could have been colonized by the British. Probably we would have been colonized by a different, um, a different country, but um, certainly not the British. You know, Asante would have of course, prevented the, um, the British from colonizing the whole of Ghana. And they did that. In 1828, the British left and they, were, they never thought of coming back because they were fed up of what Asante was, you know, engaging, you know, always war and, and therefore disrupting peace. It's sad, you know, <laughs> because I wish they wouldn't have come back. But lo and behold, MacLean, who was then appointed the president of the Council of Merchants, was instructed by these, um, of course, by the British governor that do not interfere in the local politics of, of these people because uh, we are no more interested in them. Whatever they want to do with their life, let them do it. What you have to do is to just treat with the people. Just treat, go and buy your items and go. Go and buy your items and leave. Simple. And we don't know what happened. MacLean did not listen to that advice. Then started to sign treaties with the local people. Well, you can't blame MacLean so much because uh, he was a trader. He was a president. He had been appointed as a president of a council of merchants. And he needed a peaceful atmosphere, you know, a stable atmosphere in order for trade to go on because if the Asantes are continually attacking the southern states and McLean does nothing, what for that means is that they, they still can't trade. And so McLean needed peace. And how does for McLean get this peace? He has to go a step further. Alright? And that step further was to sign a bond, a treaty with the these three uh, these two people. Asante on one side, and the Fante on the other side and as well as the British on the other side. So we call the treaty tripartite treaty, which means involving three, I said what, three um, people for signing an agreement. And so that was one of the achievements of uh, MacLean. And we, we will look at the terms of the tripartite treaty in the course of time. Now, another achievement was that he was able to bring about peace and stability in the Gold Coast. All right, peace and stability in the Gold Coast because he was able to calm all the two parties, Asante and the Southern States, down. He also encouraged uh, missionary activities, all right, and he did that by uh, providing temporal accommodation for some of the missionaries, especially uh, Joseph Downwell of the of course, Wesleyan of course, missions. Then also, he also managed to suppress some barbaric court practices, and you will see that. In the in the Trapata Treaty, the terms in the treaty, he requested that Asante and the other for certain chiefs stop of course human sacrifices and pioneering and other stuff. He also established the police system. And so for McLean, we can say he was the introducer of or he was the founder of the Ghana Police um, Service, which today we have of course uh, changed to Ghana Police. So these were some of the activities, I mean are the activities of McLean. Do not forget that MacLean was opposed uh, by some of his peers and so he was called back and then uh, he was made a judicial assessor and then of course Commander Hill then was appointed in uh, 1843 to actually come and take over because MacLean had done all the work that uh, for the British governor could not do. Now Asante was now peaceful, uh, the whole um, colony was now peaceful. And so trade could go on, of course, governance and colonization could also what, go on for the British. And so uh, the British Parliament, for, of course, uh, uh, for the British Parliamentary of course, Select Committee, 
requested that they go over to the Gold Coast again and assume power. And so I have a video also on the uh, uh, on the born of 1844, and this culminated in the born of 1844. So let's take a look at the terms in the born of 18 uh, in the Tripata Treaty, and I. Uh, do not forget to subscribe to our channel. George McLean was appointed as the president of the Council of Merchants in October 1829. He arrived in the Gold Coast in 1830. George McLean will go down in history as one of the best colonial administrators, if not the best, in the Gold Coast. He laid down the foundation for the successful takeover of the Gold Coast by the British government from 1843 to 1947. When he arrived at Cape Coast in early 1830 to take up the post, peace had not been made between Asante and the Southern States. George McLean realized that there could not be trade and stability without peace. He believed that to establish law and order, it was necessary for the British to intervene in the affairs of the people of the Gold Coast. So even though the Committee of Merchants had been instructed by the British government not to interfere, in the affairs of the people outside the fort and castles, Maclean began to involve himself actively in local affairs. In 1831, George Maclean began to negotiate with the Asante who were considered as troublesome and aggressive. The negotiation was successfully completed with a peace treaty signed between the Asante and the British and the Allied Southern States in April 1831 through diplomacy. The treaty was referred to as the Tripartite Treaty because it involved three parties. Terms or clauses in the 1831 Tripartite Treaty signed between McLean and Santa and the Southern States. Dentra has seen over 75 to four in Vuma and Kipos. The other Southern States, whom they are Santa, regarded as their the vassals, were to be free. All parallels were to be referred to the British for peaceful settlement. As part of the treaty, McLean asked the Asante who to summon two Asante princes as hostages and to pay 600 ounces of gold, which was to return after six years if Asante kept the treaty. The two Asante princes were Ousu Ansa and Ousu Pantavisa. For their part, the coastal states promised to keep open the trade routes and to allow the Asante and any other people from the interior to trade with anyone they like. They promised to respect the Asante women. Both Asante and coastal states agreed to stop Panyari, human sacrifices and other cruel customs. George McLean tried very hard to ensure that the terms of the treaty were observed. He wanted to win the confidence of Asante and sent two Asante princes, Ousu Ansa and Ousu Nkwantabita, to England to study. They returned to Kumasi in 1842. After six years, McLean returned the gold to Asante, untouched and still in its original package. This impressed the Asante and increased their trust for McLean. Lord McLean died in 1847 and was buried beside his wife in Cape Coast at the forecourt of the Cape Coast Castle.